Hi everyone, welcome to the update of 8th August. Beers took a break for a day and they are back. The reason for complete meltdown in the middle of the day actually did not make any sense to me. The RBI governor was not expected to announce any rate cuts today. Slight inflation was revised, that is okay. Just that beers probably needed a reason to short the market and they just got it and bang, all stocks fell down. Today's nugget landing towards the end will be on MRPL. Why I think MRPL is a good investment and why I am continuing to hold the stocks. Well, I don't hold on to stocks that have gone bad at all. I book my losses. The downfall was led by software and oil. These two sectors were leading yesterday. Insurance was the winner today. LIC was up a little only, but all other players, they were up anywhere between 1 or 2 percent. The ICICI pack, just like ICICI bank is doing pretty well. They are closest to 52 week high. IT bled. NASDAQ is not looking good. IT is reflecting that. LTA entry, there is a news. LTA entry will be out of Nifty soon. I'll cover that in the next slide. But look at the big players. Infosys down 2.75%. HCL down 2.5%. TCS, not that much, but still 0.7% for TCS size is pretty big. So for both Nifty and Bank Nifty, there was a hump and then there was a speech and then there was a meltdown. And the meltdown continued after a bit of consolidation. Note that today the candle sizes were pretty big. Yesterday I was talking about a very small range. Today this range was 23,950 to literally 24,350, a 400 point range. So RBI MPC kept the repo rate unchanged for the ninth consecutive time. The governor just said banks to go and manage. You go to households and ask them for deposits. Don't come to me. Nifty rejig is nearly getting official for September. Trent and BL will be in. LTI Mindtree and Divi's Lab will go out. Also in Bank Nifty, Canara Bank is all set to replace Bandhan Bank. This is good news for Canara Bank. It has been kind of performing very well for last one or two years. Two large companies, Zomato and Geo Financial, they are waiting for first getting included in the FNO section. Once that is done, they can also join Nifty. That can be done as early as August. But I am not sure if they will be eligible to join Nifty in the September rejig. In terms of market performance today, Nifty fell 0.8%. Bank Nifty did not go anywhere. Nifty IT down 2%. FIIs have just been selling beside 1st of August. Every day has been sell. For DIs, every day has been a buy. Now this number may look like 20,000 crore for the month net. However, FI sold 18,000 crore today also. Just that they bought nearly 15,000 crore. Tremendous amount of trading happening that this is the cash number, not the FNO number. HDFC today held the four together 1% up. Bharti Airtel reversed a bit, half percent. But besides that, nearly everyone else was down. So besides yesterday's gains, the entire set of five days is looking fiery red here. Same with NASDAQ, besides Tuesday, the entire five day span is looking fiery red. Suddenly only Apple is the $3 trillion company. Apple should actually move up now in terms of market cap. Today, Bitcoin moved a lot, 4% up. Rupee weakened 0.1%. Brent slightly up only. Gold is up, silver is up. At this rate, gold will probably breach 75K and be at an all time high despite the duty cut around Diwali time. This was the point at which beers entered today. Each and every stock literally cracked after that, including the index. This was where the governor made his TV appearance. Complete V for the entire market nearly. Now the problem today was no one was expecting anything different. So people kind of took it indifferently. No one expected that there will be such a severe reversal in Nifty today. So many people would have been caught on the long side while the markets corrected. Banks only HDFC was up literally, everything else was down. Volumes were however less than 100% for each and every bank. Defense pack, most of the stocks actually corrected. This is after the governor's speed. Now governor's speed has nothing to do with defense pending. However, this was the sentimental damage. Each and every stock fell from the highest point of the day. Select stocks were up a bit. Mazgaon Dock, Solar Industries, Bharat Dynamics. But overall the sector was down 0.7%. Hindustan Zinc has decided that it will go in the reverse direction of all other metals every day. The steel stocks corrected severely. Hindustan Copper also crossed 300 I mentioned that yesterday. But then it retreated. Hindustan Zinc was up but Vedanta was down. The forging stocks had something today. Even Ramkrishna forging was up a lot today. But besides Hindustan Zinc and Bharat Forge, every stock was down 1.4% for the sector. 
Railways, what a contrast. Yesterday was all green, today was all red. Nearly all gains from yesterday were erased. Same with software, yesterday everything was green, today everything was red. Energy, the complete sector was bleeding today, there was no respite. The Adani pack was down little only, but Tata Power continued to bleed 3% down. The big boys NTPC power grid 2% down. The oil pack fall was led by Reliance 1% down. ONGC 2%, IOC 1%, BPCL 1.5%, nothing was spared. The sector was down 1.22%, the oil sector, and 1.33%, the power pack. Consumption pack was mixed back today. ITC was up, but Nestle, Britannia, Tata consumer were down. HUL was down a little. Godrej was down a lot. Gillette. 2% up. Now one interesting fact, Gillette India's largest supplier is Jindal Stainless. The Razor company is one of the biggest customers for Jindal Stainless. Compared to 36 sectors up yesterday, only 9 were up today. The greed reduced from 30 to 29%. Best performance in last 11 days has been renewable energy, household goods, investment banking, natural gas utilities and insurance. The worst performance in last 11 days which is today plus previous 10 days. Healthcare providers, food and tobacco, aerospace and defense, telecom, textiles, construction materials. Up only 3 to 4 days out of 11. Tata Motors has entered the top 10 club. That is a global auto club, which is a big achievement. Now, by that virtue, market cap wise, even Maruti should be there. I'm not sure why Maruti is not listed. Mahindra and Mahindra is also not far off. The sector today, however, was down 0.3%, led by a fall in Maruti Suzuki. One thing I like is in the sector, if there are four or five players which have comparable market caps, gives a fair playing ground and healthy competition. Now, these two companies are not related. Varun Beverages is Pepsi, United Spirits is alcohol, but still at least two comparable numbers in terms of market cap here. Varun Beverages today was down 2%. Asian Paints after a good run corrected 3% today. Pooling crude prices is a good news for Asian Paints and Pedilite. I believe also for SRF. Coal India was up a lot yesterday. It was down today. The construction pack was big today lnt rvnl both of them were down two and a half and four and a half percent cement pack corrected a lot trent is celebrating its arrival in the nifty today bsc was up a lot kfin also was up eight percent market had a bad day but insurance had a fantastic day nearly every player was up a lot here is bsc eight percent up siemens down abb up remaining sector was bleeding Pharma up today also. Real estate was down a lot, led by Goodrich. No buying coming in jewelry at all. Kalyan Jewelers down today also. So was Titan. Today, entire textile and apparel pack was down, including Page Industries. After touching 52 week high, Page Industries has actually corrected a lot. It is nearly in 60-70% zone now. Telecom was mixed back. 38 stocks in Nifty were down, 12 were up. But no surprises. HDFC, Tata Motors, Bharti Airtel were the top performers. Reliance, Infosys, LNT, TCS, HCL, they were dragging Nifty down. The financial pack continues to be in the fear zone. Next 50, 34 stocks down, 16 up. Trent and ICICI insurance twins were doing the best. Today, Fusion Microfinance fell another 8% and it seemed too good to lose out on. I checked the forecast given by Motila Loswal. They have, I think, said 440 kind of levels after the downgrade. In fact, the stock closed around 315 today. This is a lifetime low. So I bought with long term in mind in the long term portfolio. Fill it, shut it, forget it. I've left some option to buy about 40% more if this cracks below 300 now. To get the money, I had to sell BSC. Decent profit was on the table because it was up 8% today. So Profit in the cash market, but continued investments. My simple logic of investing at this juncture is even if the stock reclaims where it was two days back, let's say 400 levels, then that also is 20% or more kind of gain. Even in next one year, if that is achieved, I am fine. All right, today's topic for Nugget Learning is MRPL. First, the stock's performance in last six months, it has gone nowhere actually. The highest point, however, was nearly 300. It fell a lot after the results. In terms of results, I have already mentioned that the major problem to this time was that the high price of crude was not passed on to the consumers because of the election season. So total income year on year was fine. 24,876 crore became 27,334 crores. However, expenses exploded. That is mainly because cost of material consumed was very high. So expensive crude no chance of increasing the prices and on top of that windfall tax. All of that led to EPS reducing from 5.79 to 0.5.
EPS wise, this is a bad fall. However, if we understand the impact of it, then it can make a lot of money, hopefully in the times to come. Let me come to that. So the sales numbers of this company are highly related to crude prices. But if crude is down, the output price also will be down only. But if you look at the last few quarters, there is no significant reduction in sales. 24, 26, 25, 21, 19, 24, 25, 23. Consistent sales. The OPM also 14, 10, 11. That was going fine. It's 5% in December. This was a bad bump, but 9% back here. This is the bad quarter. OPM is low. The net profit was a paltry 73 crore compared to 1138 in the previous quarter and 1015 in the quarter one year back. The interesting part I wanted to highlight to you, this is from the annual report they published at the end of previous financial year. If you look at the product mix, India accounts for 7,26,711 crores worth of sales. Other countries, which essentially exports 3,25,000 crores. This is nearly 30% of their turnover is exports. This is a big deal because here you don't have to subsidize. You can increase the prices. The problem is that whenever the prices want to go up, government imposes a windfall tax. The companies in this pack have always requested the government, please take dividends from us, but let us earn first. Government has always refused. One more thing I wanted to highlight was the product mix wise. The biggest contribution comes from high speed diesel. ATF is at number three. Number one and number three are very high margin businesses used in high end industries. ATF goes into aircrafts, exported a lot. High speed diesel goes into sports cars. Under normal conditions, these will be giving high margins. Now, good news wise, Brent peaked in April in the recent months. This is where MRPL was hit in the previous quarter. And since then, Brent has been going down. Brent down will obviously mean that the windfall tax will be zero or very low. So good wise, Lok Sabha elections are over. So there is no need to subsidize any further. Prices of crude are low. Russian crude is coming in. Product mix is good. Exports are happening. The proposed merger with HCL, I believe merging with a larger company will help MRPL, which is a lot smaller because right now most of their sale happens around Karnataka. After merger, they will be able to sell their products across India. The bads windfall tax whenever crude is costly. So if crude becomes very costly, run for cover. Still, there are more elections, but in the north, mostly Bihar and UP, weak rupee, which means imports are costlier. This actually does not make big deal because they have to export. So the incoming money actually makes up. So I would actually want to make weak rupee move upwards. So in my books for next quarter, at least MRPL remains a good investment. I'm continuing to hold for now, but there are a lot of risks in this stock. Hope this education helps you take the right decision. But note, I am not an RIA. Thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow.